Greetings gamers, I'm Ian Higton from Eurogamer. Earlier this month it emerged that PlayStation 4 exclusive racing game Drive Club included microtransactions, and it caused quite a stir. In the game you unlock a new car at each of the 50 levels of progression, or you can pay to unlock a car immediately. It's a system some have said has no place in a full priced console game, but according to developer Evolution Studios, Drive Club's microtransactions are misunderstood. In Drive Club you earn fame which powers you through the progression system. You work your way from level 1 to level 50 and each of those levels unlocks a new car. If you don't want to wait though, you can pay for a new car with real world cash. So at level 25 for example, you might spot the Ferrari F12 which is unlocked at level 38. If you want immediate access to that, you can pay for it. But how much will it cost? Evolution Studios declined to confirm Drive Club's pricing model to us in a recent interview that you can read over on Eurogamer.net, but they said each car will cost a few pence. It's a system identical to that used in Evolution's 2012 PlayStation Network game Motorstorm RC, and according to game director Paul Rostinsky, if anything, people said, that's a great way to access this content immediately. For comparison, vehicles in Motorstorm RC can be bought for as little as 21p. The important thing about microtransactions is, if they ever influence the game design or progression, then yes, there can be a negative influence, Rostinsky added. But that's absolutely not what we've done with Drive Club. Progression is quick, you unlock cards rapidly. If you're part of a club, you get access to these things super quick. Drive Club does not include £40 cars or the like, Rostinsky added, as some driving games with microtransactions do. We don't want our players to feel like we're nickel and diming them. That's not our intention. We want players to play the game as normal. Indeed, it sounds as if Evolution would prefer players to ignore Drive Club's microtransactions and unlock cars through the natural course of progression. We don't want them to use them, really, Rostinsky added. We want them to play the tour and naturally progress through the cars. We've got everything from hot hatches to hypercars, and we don't really want people jumping into hypercars immediately because they might not be tooled up. They might not have the skills they need. By all means, you can do that, but we'd prefer players to play with the cars we intended to be first. The proof will be when people play Drive Club. They'll see it's a non-issue when they get their hands on and start to play the game. It's not intrusive, it's almost invisible. It's something we actually kind of hide a little bit. Meanwhile, Rostinsky also explained Evolution's decision to target Drive Club's native resolution at 1080p and a frame rate of 30 frames per second. The latter has disappointed some who were hoping for 60 frames, but Rostinsky said 30 frames per second was settled on because the game's visuals already push the PS4's processing power hard. The cars are the most detailed cars you'll ever see in a racing game, inside or out, he insisted. We'll make sure all the worlds are densely populated. The vistas, well, you can see them. There are no shortcuts taken. We don't have 2D crowds or baked shadows. Everything's dynamic. Everything from our dynamic lighting solution to screen space reflections and our anti-aliasing techniques. We use similar techniques to temporal anti-aliasing and also FX anti-aliasing as well. Well, we've got radiosity and dynamic volumetric clouds which you'll see god rays being cast through. You've got headlights in cars at night time which will cast shadows onto other cars in front. It's all these things which couldn't be done last generation. We're really pushing the visual boundaries. Rostinsky also pointed to Drive Club's audio, which is linked into the game's physics system, as hogging quite a bit of their processing time. The physics too require the PS4's attention. It's not an arcade racer, he said. It's this balance that sits between simulation and arcade racer. Underneath, it's very deep. We're taking all the reference data from the manufacturers, plugging them into our handling dynamic engine, and getting the real feel of the cars. But then, we're layering on accessibility layers that make a difference for people who just want to casually pick up the game. So, we're spending a lot of runtime processing the physics, and spending a lot of time pulling in dynamic challenges taken from the server as you race. It's all these things combined. 
Given the game runs at 30 frames per second, Evolution worked to reduce the latency between controller input and on-screen action so that it's as short as possible. The handling is ultimately the core of any racing game. We wanted to make sure 30 frames per second did not compromise that experience. Rostinski continued, It's always a balance at the end of the day for where you spend your processing time. What do you want to push forward? You'll see games at 90p and 60 frames per second or whatever. We think 1080p and 30 frames per second is the right choice for Drive Club. When players see it and play it, they'll be happy with that decision. Drive Club was intended to launch alongside the PS4 in November 2013, but it was delayed until October 2014 because Evolution struggled to get its social features working as well as it had hoped. We were all disappointed we didn't manage to hit launch, Rostinski said, but we pride ourselves on the quality of our games. We knew at that point that we had to make the decision to put the game back. Things weren't quite as we intended. We wanted to make sure the seamless social connectivity was absolutely perfect. We wanted to make sure the visuals, audio and handling came together to create the driving experience we wanted. It's an ambitious game and we wanted to make sure we delivered on all these problems. Promises. Rostinski described the studio's reaction to the delay. I wouldn't say it was demoralising, but it was one of those things where you go, oof, we've worked so hard and come so close, but not quite got what we wanted. Now though, morale is up and the developer is on the right track. Everyone could look towards the future, Rostinski said. They understand these were the goals we set out for Drive Club at the start and we wanted to hit every single one. As a result of the delay, Drive Club is one of Sony's key PlayStation 4 exclusive games for the console's second Christmas, and Sony will be hoping it stands out among a raft of racing games. Ubisoft's The Crew, Slightly Mad Studios Project Cars, and the expected Forza Horizon 2 for the Xbox One included. As for Evolution, it's looking towards the game's launch in October, and is planning post-release support. Thanks for watching this video, if you enjoyed it please do give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel by clicking on that on screen annotation. We've got exclusive interviews, early gameplay previews, retro content, interactive live streams and loads more video game goodness dropping daily right here. And in the almost words of Aerosmith, you won't wanna miss a thing. Sorry.